Hey YouTube and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are doing a Q&A. In my community tab, I asked you guys to ask me questions that I could answer in this Q&A. And uh, yeah, we're gonna just get right into it and do that. The first question from Olivier E. How long did it take you to speak fluent Italian? Well, it depends which way you wanna look at it. I guess that I learned Italian to a decent level. I'd say my third year being here. I've been here for five years now. So I'm pretty good, especially if I'm able to one, be in a situation where I'm not under a, an insane amount of pressure. Like if I'm talking to somebody randomly in the street or I'm communicating with a cashier at a store, my Italian is like, buonissimo. But if I am talking to like somebody that is really important or I'm in a situation that's really important or has a little bit of pressure attached to it, my Italian doesn't do that well. Um, it also depends on how familiar I am with the topic. If I'm talking about something that I'm really familiar with, usually my Italian is pretty good. If I'm talking about something that I'm not familiar with, my Italian is not very good. So to answer your question, I was here about three years before my Italian started getting to a level where I would call myself more or less fluent in Italian and that was three years of living here and more or less four years of actually studying Italian in school so it's different for everybody I would have learned Italian a lot easier and a lot faster if I had studied in Italian but I came here and I studied my degree in English so there's that's one reason as to why I didn't learn Italian maybe as fast what do you think of Italian pop culture film music says KSM when it's good I like it a lot I really go out and I try to find Italian music and Italian films because I like seeing them. I like hearing about like the Italian perspective. I like I like watching things that are Italian. I don't know how else to say it and I like listening to music that's in Italian. But I guess I will say that I have really high standards. I don't like Italian pop culture that you can see is just copying American pop culture or what is popular in that moment. I, I'm much more inclined to like Liberato than I am to like Dark Polo Gang or Sfera e Basta. We'll say it that. Il piatto più buono che I'm assaggiato in Italia. Well, I can't even remember what it was called, but one time I had this like osobuco type thing. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave a picture or a picture of the menu here because I don't remember, but that was really, really good. Do you have any goals for 2019? Yeah, I would like to double my savings. I would like to make some good investments and I would like to make double what I made last year. Go big or go home. What is your advice for someone who wants to study in Italy but is afraid? Well, it depends what you're afraid of. If you're afraid of being away from your family, I'd say don't be. I started talking to my mom more when I left the country than I did when we were living in the same house because when we were living in the same house, like she would work in the day, I would work at night, I'd go to school in the day. We barely ever saw each other. And so, you know, there would be times where I hadn't talked to my mom for like three days. Whereas now we talk a lot more often because of things like WhatsApp and Skype. It's really easy to stay in touch with your, con your family members living abroad now. If you're afraid of being in a new place and being a new culture, I think that's pretty normal. But if you take certain steps, you'll be able to fit right in in Italy. So I'd say go for it. How was the experience of living in another country without your family? Says Ines Ferreira. I didn't really notice it that much. A lot of people ask me like if I ever miss my family, if I ever get homesick. And the truth of the matter is I've always been and I always am so busy in Italy that I never realized that I'm not, my family is not around. First of all, I talk to them often as I already said. And like I'm so busy and focusing on the work that I'm doing and moving forward in life and my career and everything that by the time that I realize I'm miss my family it's already time for me to go back and see them i see my family usually like once a year so i don't usually get homesick or miss my family because i'm i keep myself really really busy here ti piace leggere quali sono i tuoi libri preferiti un bacio delle marche from roberta i do like to read when i was younger i read a lot nowadays i don't really have a lot of time i depend a lot on audiobooks and if i'm being completely honest it's been a while since i've actually listened to an audiobook 
book but the next book that I want to read is Michelle Obama's book Becoming I've heard amazing things about it I know my parents read Obama's books and they loved Obama's Obama's book so I want to read Michelle Obama's book would you change anything about how you moved to Italy slash prepared for it honestly no Sam B asked Emma Madsen asked are you still with Enrico yes we are I mai subito episodi di razzismo in Italia XM asked Honestamente, sì, è abbastanza strano, però io ho subito tipo tre episodi di razzismo in Italia, e in Italia e erano tutti uguali, praticamente stavo camminando a casa, sì, in questa casa, sì, nella mia vecchia casa, e uno, un tipo, a caso nella strada mi, chiama, mi ha chiamato negra, tipo loro camminano, io cammino e mi, chiamava, mi chiamavano negra e sono andati via, tipo una volta alla mia casa vecchia, c'era questi che guidavano un camion che hanno detto negra e tipo hanno guidato via. Un'altra volta quando stavo camminando verso la casa qua, uno camminava e mi ha... He like whispered in my ears and he was like negra and he just kept walking by. E poi un'altra volta stavo attraversando la strada e c'era questa macchina che stavo uscendo dal parcheggio e tipo mi passava e mentre mi passava ha detto negra e poi ha guidato via. Io non lo so, trovo questa cosa abbastanza strano, immaturo e non ha tanto senso, non mi sembra una cosa sensato. Infatti mi sembra abbastanza ridicolo perché non stanno neanche lì per fare niente, Chiamo, dicono negra e poi vanno via, like makes no sense to me. In America nessuno fa questa cosa perché sa che è una cosa che può essere una, una situazione che può escalare like it could escalate pretty quickly però sì quando sono successi tutti questi episodi ero ar abbastanza arrabbiata ma ho detto a me stessa che queste persone sono le persone più basse di Italia ed alla fine del giorno la mia vita è meglio del loro sono abbastanza sicura che io guadagno più di quello che guidava il camion e possono chiamarmi negro quanto tanto vogliono la mia vita è ottima e quindi vaffanculo. Did you ever get negative responses when you told people you were going to study live in Italy? Yes, I got a lot of them actually. I mean, not even negative, but a lot of people were confused why I would do that. We have amazing universities in America. It was just something seen as very strange to do. A lot of people were familiar with the fact that Italy's economic situation is not the best, so they were also confused and like, why would you go to a country where youth unemployment is that high and you know that it's not gonna be easy to find a good job? Like, people were confused, but I never back down from a challenge. Actually, when somebody tells me that I can't do something, it motivates me that much more to do it, and so I proved everybody wrong. All the people that said, but you don't even speak Italian. Ora lo parlo. All of the people that said, oh Tia, you don't have any family in Italy. How are you going to make it without your family? Well, I made a lot of good friends that are like my family and they've helped me immensely and been an amazing support in addition to my family that I talk to from WhatsApp and Skype and found a job, a good job, and I'm living my best life. So if you are thinking of doing something like going against the grain and doing something not very popular, don't let those people get in your head because if I had let those people get in my head and change my decision, I wouldn't be living my best life right now. Do you think Italian is hard to learn? Ask them all. It depends what language you're coming from. I think that if you're coming from French, it's easier than if you're coming from English. And if you're coming from English, it's easier than if you're coming from Chinese. But in terms of like, other languages, I would say that Italian is easier to learn than French and German because, for example, German, you have to worry about declinations and that's pretty hard. In, Fran in French, you have to learn about accents and that's pretty hard. In Italian, they have those things, but it's less important to know them, like I didn't study them and see I speak Italian, but I'd say that Italian is harder than Spanish. And I'd say that Italian is honestly on the same level of difficulty as English because everybody here wants to talk about how in easy English is, but nobody here speaks English, so. <laughs> I mean, I'm exaggerating. There are people here that speak English, but not as many as you would think since everybody wants to go around talking about how easy English is and they make the same mistakes all the time. And so that's fine because as I said, English is not like, 
it's not any easier or harder than any other language it's still another language that you have to learn but in my experience i find that italians have the same amount of difficulty learning english as an english person has learning italian so i think they're more on like the same level is it possible to go to italy with very little understanding of the language and learn it there honestly yes i mean lots of people do that they come here on student visas to study the language at a language school and i know a couple people that learned italian and perfected their italian just like that actually i think it's easier to learn italian once you're here because then you're submerged in it everything around you is in italian and you're forced to speak it than when you're just studying it an hour a week in a class in a non-italian speaking country for sure that's why i learned it so much faster living here in italy living here in italy i learned it in three years or when i was studying it at school i was studying it for four years and i still didn't know una cipa is venice a good place to live as a student study abroad or in general i have no idea because i've never lived in venice nor do i know anybody that lives there unfortunately alessia asked do you ever think to go back to the u.s in this current period of my life no i'm going to be studying abroad in florence italy in the spring semester what are some of the places i need to go or any things that i'm American students should know. American students should know that if you wouldn't do it at home, you probably shouldn't do it here. If you wouldn't put yourself in a strange situation at home by like, I don't know, going home with a stranger, leaving your group of friends. Oh, most of the time that I hear about Americans doing crazy things in Italy and getting in trouble or getting killed because of it, it's because they were doing crazy things that honestly you wouldn't do that at home. So I don't know why people feel like they're safer to do it in Italy. For sure, Italy is not as dangerous as America for a number of reasons, but you still have to use like a certain level of caution and common sense to not put yourself in dangerous situations, especially if you're in one of the bigger cities like Rome or Milan or Florence. And what are some of the places you should go? Well, if you go to Italy, you definitely should go to Venice, Rome, Milan. And if you can pick one of like the southern places, we're all three of the famous southern places you should re definitely check out Puglia um, maybe Bari but less Bari and more like the coastal towns like Ostuni and Polignano Naples you should go there I've never been there but if you get a chance to go to Naples you could go you should go to Naples and anywhere in Sicily pretty much well anywhere that's not dangerous what do you think about the European more relaxed take on work and jobs and how big is the difference in the matter between Europeans and Americans well I've never had a corporate office job in America so I can't really make a one-to-one -one comparison. What From what I think though, Italians and Europeans don't necessarily have a more laid back attitudes to work. It definitely depends where you are because if you go to, I don't know, the UK, you have a way more stressful work environment that is just like America as opposed to, I don't know, maybe Spain. I think from the outside that maybe in Spain they have a more laid back feel. And I also know that it depends a lot on the company because okay, the company that I work at now is pretty, I don't even wanna say laid back, it's just more normal you have your work to do and you finish your work and once your work is finished you go home and it's done but I've also worked at other companies here where there's very high stress and even when you finish the work you just need to help somebody else with their work and it's a much different environment so I don't know what I'd say about the more relaxed work on jobs I think it depends so much on what company you're working for and where it's very random but do you have the, a driving permit in Italy I would like to know if the practice test is with auto shifting car I do not <laughs> apparently you can take the test with an auto automatic car but it would mean that you can only drive automatic but then people forget that they live in Italy and you can actually do whatever you want because what are the chances of you getting pulled over I'm not I'm not condoning anybody to break the law but everybody's like oh Tia you you, you it just makes more sense to get the manual uh, license first of all I have no intention in my life to ever learn manual or ever have to drive manual and second of all if I knew how to drive manual, why would I get pulled over? And I literally never see any cars getting pulled over here in Italy. So it's just kind of like, I know people that drive even without a license and they've never gotten pulled over. Sure, it's a huge risk, a risk that I would never take because I'm a risk averse person and I like following the law, but people just forget all the time that we're in Italy. Hope people don't take that answer the wrong way, but they probably will. Do you have the desire to learn any other foreign languages besides Italian? Man, I have tried time and time and time again to learn German, but I just always get distracted by life 
it's so hard to learn a language when you have no practical use for it and you're not in an atmosphere that really uses it or needs it and so like i just keep getting distracted but you know that's life i would love to learn german i would love to learn my father's language which is yoruba it's a nigerian language arabic looks pretty cool but you know learning a language is hard and time consuming if there is one thing you think is the most important to tell a young american girl with dreams to go to italy for college what would you tell her just take a deep breath and do it and honestly I've realized that people, privilege changes depending on where you are. As a black woman in America, I didn't have a lot of privilege, but as a black woman in Italy, a black American woman in Italy, I have a quite a bit of privilege. And so honestly, as an American woman, black, white, Asian, you have endless amount of opportunity in a country like Italy. Italy is one of those countries that put you in a privileged position. And so there's not really much you have to worry about as opposed to if you went someplace else in the world. So most important thing to tell a young American girl like I said to the other commenter, don't do anything crazy or stupid that you wouldn't do back home and just come here, enjoy the food, enjoy the people, and live your best life. I can't even wait. Quante volte in Italia ti chiedono di stare con i tuoi capelli naturali da zero a mille? Quanto ti rompono, rompe le co la cosa? Onestamente non tanto perché le persone non vedono che ho una parrucca di solito finché io dico ah oh, io porto una parrucca nessuno sa e quindi nessuno mi rompe. Onestamente le uniche persone che mi rompono sono quelli sotto il video in cui porto, parlo del, dei miei capelli naturali quindi lì. Okay. Però di solito durante la giornata le persone non, non pensano neanche e, no, e anche se sapevano non, pensano, non penso che si interessara, interesserebbero. I think that was correct, but you guys will correct me in the comments. Would you make a video on blackface, school to prison pipeline, war on drugs, and gentrification? I don't, I'm not sure about those topics. A lot of people here in Italy think that when black people complain about these things, they're just being lazy, when in reality, there's a whole system that's holding them back. An American perspective on that would really help. I don't know, because those are some pretty heavy topics, and I don't know if they're topics that I really want to confront. I don't really want to have to deal with the kind of comments that people would make on that. And I think it's interesting that you say the Italians think that when black people complain about these things, they're just being lazy. Because, you know, a lot of people think that when Italians complain, a lot of people in like the expat community, especially the expats that did well here, when they hear Italians complain, about not being able to find a job or not being able to do x y and z they think that italians are being lazy because if the expats were able to do it in a new country where they didn't speak the language where they didn't have generational wealth how come you aren't able to do it but they don't realize that there's a whole system here that's holding italians back years and years of tradition years and years of mentalities that hold a lot of italians back and give make italians have certain baggage that certain foreigners wouldn't have so if there's any italian that thinks that way about black people when they complain about these issues i would just like remind you that one of the best ways to know if you are biased or wrong is to think about it in a different from a different perspective and then you'll understand that you know you're just being an asshole Kayla Vorofai I work in I work in a lot of different things honestly because this YouTube thing is a job this whole influencer thing is a job I do develop makeup products on the side which generate a cash flow which is a job and during the day I work in an office on a team that specializes in digital social media marketing which is another job I'm gonna leave a link or a card to the video where I talk in specific about my day job because I think that's the most interesting one how do you budget your income or do you have any budget Budgeting tips for new workers in general. I've been curious since Enrico mentioned you plan your life with Excel. I did do a budget one time, but I don't follow it strictly, strictly, strictly. I think that one thing that you can just do is to make sure that you're paying the bare necessities for the reoccurring expenses. Like I pay 400 euros a month for rent, which is a, not a lot at all. I made sure that I put myself in a position where a reoccurring expense that I have to pay every month, like rent, would be really, really low. I pay like 12 euros a month for my phone 
22 euros a month for my metro card which actually this year even less because i got the yearly abonamento so i paid like I think it was 19 euros a month i can't even remember i paid not a lot and what other expenses do i have aside from that i guess we pay like 20 25 euros each for our utilities a month and that's it i keep my costs very very low and then on top of that, I make sure that I maximize my earnings. I have the money that, that, I just said it, I have the money that I get from my actual job, the money I get from YouTube, the money I get from influencer deals, and the money I get from my makeup lines. So that's four different streams of income. I don't really have to think about budgeting that much. I just know that I need to be reasonable. I know that if I wanna plan a trip or something, there's a area where it makes sense but I'm not gonna go and get a first class ticket and spend thousands of dollars on a trip. You know what you're bringing in and what's going out so you can be conscious to just not upset that balance. Cosa ne pensi della musica italiana? E cosa che pen ne pensi di trap or del rap italiano? I think that trap has really overtaken rap in these days, so I don't really hear much Italian rap that often and I hate it. I hate trap music here in Italy. At first I kind of liked it because, you know, trap has a really good beat and I like songs with beats, but nowadays I'm just really over it and I can't wait for the trend to like subside in Italy because it's just so try hard and fake here. The whole reason that trap speaks to people in the US, aside from being catchy and danceable, but there's a lot of people that can, you know, identify with that reality. I know that me, even though I didn't live in like South Side Chicago, I did live in a poorer part of Connecticut where some of those things like people, seeing people deal drugs or there being like robberies, not the worst of the worst, but I lived in a pretty rough neighborhood when I was first growing up. So I can kind of like, I like those songs because I can kind of identify with that life and I can identify with that struggle. In Italy though, there are very few people that have that trap struggle. There are very few people that are living next to the spacciatore. And the people that have this kind of struggle already have their type of music. They're like Neapolitans and people that live in the provincia of Roma or maybe the provincia of, of Milan, but even if you're living in the provincia of Milan, it's still not like that. It's still very different, you know? So a lot of the times I feel like many of the trappers are inauthentic. The inauthenticity of it just turns me off to it. And also the fact that nowadays all of the Italian trap songs basically sound the same. And so I'm just pretty, I'm pretty over it. I hope people don't take it the wrong way, but I would much rather listen to something from someone like Liberato, which is very unique and is talking about an Italian experience and an Italian story in a new way than just some wannabes that are tr like, copying trap music i don't know maybe you guys think differently than me let me know in the comment section down below but trap really doesn't appeal to me italian trap really doesn't appeal to me anymore was bocconi worth it yes especially since i had a scholarship so i didn't pay for it if you can afford it it's worth it enrico tia poi regalato per natale quelle specie di esporadilias moderne di valenciaga che ti piacevano tanto no <laughs> No, he didn't. Hey, Tia, come finito con Favi J? Come ho detto in questo video qua? Stereotypes about Italians, Italy, you realized were not true living in Milan. Stereotypi in America sui italiani che hai capito essere erati vivendo a Milano. One is that all Italians are mafiosi. That's not true. Honestly, I made a whole video about this before. Stereotypes usually have some truth to them. And what's important is to understand where the stereotypes come from. And I did this when I talked about stereotypes in America, which everybody like talks about, which yeah, they're true, but do you know why they're true? Because I bet if you knew why they were true, you wouldn't use that as a thing to attack them. Like the fact that Italians are obsessed with food is a stereotype, but there's also a bit of truth to it. You guys know it and it's like cultural. So there's really no reason to use that as a negative thing against Italians, you know? And, and I think that it, kind of goes forward like that. So I don't know of many stereotypes that are specifically not true, aside from the fact that not all Italians are mafiosi. And I'd say that most Italians aren't involved directly with the mafia. It's more important to know what's behind a stereotype than it is to, you know, refute a stereotype and go against a stereotype. Like, yes, it's good to break stereotypes, but I think it's even better to understand what's behind those stereotypes and work at fixing those problems. It's much more 
more useful. How easy is it to find a good job, not as an English teacher? It's not very easy. Like I said in my video, here, <laughs> talking about how to find a job in Italy as a foreigner. It's not easy at all, but it's possible. Pensi sia meglio lavorare in Italia o negli Stati Uniti? Onestamente dipende cosa vuoi. Se vuoi tantissimi soldi, magari è meglio lavorare in America perché lì guadagni di più, in assoluto. Però se vuoi abbastanza soldi per coprire i tu le tue spese e permetterti di fare qualcos'altro in più una volta, due volte all'anno, lì direi che è di lavorare in Italia, però c'è anche da dire che è difficile trovare lavoro in Italia, quindi it depends. What do you think about the current Italians influencers? Chiara Ferragni, Ludovica Pagani, and so on. Well, the only one in that list I know is Ferrara, Chiara Ferragni, and I don't follow her, so that should tell you. First question is, how do you like the past Christmas in Italy? Is it ever, is it any different from the one you used to have in your country? How do you celebrate the Befana as well, even though I'm not sure they celebrate it in Milan? It was good my last Christmas in Italy I ate a lot the differences were principally like I said in my video here <laughs> Italy versus USA Christmas and um, we didn't celebrate the Bifana because me and Enrico were in Milan and it didn't seem necessary have you seen any changes in the Italian's behavior towards immigrants in the last few years do you think it's true that the situation has gotten worse I'm not living in Italy anymore so I can't really tell therefore I'm curious about it I definitely think that Italian, the tensions between Italians and immigrants have gotten a little bit worse, but lately things have been calming down once because, one, because of il vostro governo di cambiamento, so like now people are complaining less because they have their new government that's making laws, so they're kind of shutting up. Also, the amount of immigrants arriving in Italy has decreased, so there's really not that much that people can complain about anymore. And so I hope that people will like look in the mirror and realize that now that the immigrants aren't coming as much, and now that the immigrants are getting laws to make their lives more difficult and make it more difficult for them to be here, yet the problems are still here and the problems are still the same, people will realize that maybe it wasn't the immigrants' fault for all those problems, but you know, who knows? How did you manage to adapt to your to your new life in a foreign country? Well, I made sure that I assimilated as best as I could and I made lots of friends. Nella vita di tutti i giorni, in che lingua pensi? Depends. Quando sono al lavoro, penso in italiano per la maggior parte, mentre quando sono a casa o con amici che parlano principalmente inglese, penso in inglese. Did you notice differences between the passers-by in America and the ones in Italy? Yeah, when people pass by in America, they usually smile at you even strangers and sometimes like if you do something well or your outfit is cute or whatever people will give you compliments on the streets in America people don't really do that in Italy meanwhile the passers-by in Italy stare a lot like do you have any suggestions on how to boost your confidence? I'm struggling with this issue right now and I'd really appreciate any piece of advice from you because you are very inspiring in this regard. I think one thing that you can do which is possible these days that weren't possible so much in the past is surround yourself with positive reinforcing images of yourself. For example, on Instagram, I follow everybody, but I follow a lot of successful black women. I follow a lot of beautiful, stylish, doing well in the business and money area women. So this motivates me to do better myself. And then when I reach my goals and my objectives that I set, because I see other people that inspire me, I see that I look like them. And since I admire and I look up to them, and now I'm also like them, it makes me a very confident person because I know that, you know, I'm doing good things. So back in the days, we didn't have social media and you didn't have control over what you are seeing and what media you are consuming now I would say to like of course don't discriminate against people that don't look like you or aren't like you but uptick a little bit and pay more attention to what people that are like you are doing and people that are focused on empowering you and lifting you up and I'm sure that you'll see you'll feel better or at least that's what I do do you have a favorite Italian dialect if so can you recreate it say veramente fantastica saluti da pizza <laughs> I guess my favorite Italian dialect is Napoletano. I mean, I also like 
Fanese, which is the one my boyfriend speaks because it's very, it's cute, you know? But I consume a lot of Neapolitan media and so every now and then you, you know, start to understand a little bit like Venica and Is and you know what I'm saying, as queste cose così. How did you make friends in a new city abroad? I just put myself out there. When people would talk to me, I would talk back. Social media helped a lot. I joined a lot of Facebook groups of people with similar interests. And when I was like at school or at work, I made an effort to talk to the people around me. And that's how I was able to make friends. Quanto tempo hai passato a imparare l'italiano? Come è stato l'approccio in un nuovo stato senza i genitori? I think that I kind of already answered this. So yeah, I answered, I think it was 43 comments. Yeah, 43 of your questions. Thank you guys so much for putting the effort into asking them. And I hope that you guys appreciate my answers we can talk about them in the comment section down below as usual i'd love to hear what you guys think as always i hope that you guys found this video interesting or useful remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in my next one Mwah.